Today we are going to look into 10 important Python libraries that every beginner should know. Uh, these libraries are important because they help you to process, analyze, and visualize geospatial data. So uh, first up is uh, GeoPandas. GeoPandas uh, extends uh, the Pandas library in order to handle geometric data types. So it is uh, important uh, to work with the uh, vector uh, geospatial data sets. GeoPandas uh, uh, supports the formats are like uh, shapefiles and the GeoJSON. Uh, it also offers uh, these uh, special operations uh, such as uh, merging, uh, grouping and uh, spatial joins. So below is an example of uh, the GeoPandas uh, library. And uh, here I have a code uh, just uh, showing you how to, uh, how to uh, use the GeoPandas library. And I'm using it in conjunction with the Matplotlib library uh, in order to visualize uh, the countries of the world. So if I run this code, uh, this is what uh, uh, we get. Right, uh, next is uh, Matplotlib, which is also a very important uh, library for creating a static, uh, animated, and uh, interactive visualization. So it can be used uh, to uh, create uh, line plots, scatter plots, bar charts, and even 3D plots. So this uh, library also works uh, seamlessly with uh, the NumPy and uh, Pandas libraries. And uh, you can use it uh, in uh, Jupyter Notebooks and the uh, other applications for data visualization. So here is a code uh, uh, just illustrating how we can uh, uh, use uh, the Matplotlib library uh, in conjunction with the Pandas and GeoPandas libraries. So I'm just displaying here the uh, the uh, global uh, global earthquakes uh, in the last 30 days. Right. Uh, then next up is a, a very important library, uh, which is uh, the G. Uh, e map. This library is uh, used uh, uh, mainly uh, with uh, the uh, Google Earth Engine uh, capabilities in Python. It uh, supports uh, interactive mapping. You can use it uh, uh, in split panel uh, map creation. And uh, you can also even uh, convert uh, uh, JavaScript to Python. And uh, this uh, library also leverages a lot of uh, the Google Earth Engine uh, catalog of satellite imagery and other geospatial data sets that you can use for your analysis. Uh, so um, to use the, this library, first uh, you, you need to be uh, registered with the Google Earth Engine. And uh, then you uh, authenticate your, your, your Earth Engine. Uh, please make sure that uh, you change to your uh, Earth Engine, uh, uh, Google Earth Engine project here, so that uh, you have access uh, to Google Earth Engine, and you can use. Uh, then you can import the uh, the GE map, and uh, use it for analysis. So here we are taking a, a data set from the Google Earth Engine catalog. Uh, this is the SRTM data set, and we just want to display it. So this is a, a code showing you how to display, uh, in this case, uh, uh, raster data. Uh, that is the SRTM uh, digital elevation model. Right, so this is just a, an example of uh, running this code, and then you can uh, do this vis visualization. So very uh, useful uh, library. Uh, you can also visualize uh, vector data uh, in this case, uh, I'm uh, visualizing the the, go the global uh, building footprint, footprint data set uh, for an urban area in Zimbabwe. And uh, you can uh, do it for any other part of the uh, the world. So this is uh, the code that I'm running. And uh, I can display uh, the map uh, showing the, the building footprints. You can zoom in. You can zoom out. Okay. So quite a useful uh, library. 
okay, that you can use uh, for your uh, vector data uh, spatial analysis. Right next here is another powerful library uh, for handling uh, geospatial raster data. So this is called Rasterio. So Rasterio uh, offers a uh, efficient performance uh, for operations such as cropping, reprojecting, resampling. So this is uh, quite a very important library uh, if you want to uh, to process uh, geospatial raster data. Right. So uh, first uh, you need to install Rasterio. And then after you install it, you can uh, import it. Uh, for, so for this case, I have my data set uh, in my Google Drive. So uh, I can uh, set up, uh, I can mount first my Google Drive and then set up the path to where the data set is located. So you can do the same. You can uh, access data from your Google uh, Drive and uh, then use it in your analysis. Uh, so next, uh, here I'm just uh, uh, preparing uh, my data set so that I can visualize it. And uh, this is the sample of the data, uh, my data set, which is in my Google Drive. Right. Uh, next, uh, we also have another library, uh, FPy. So this is quite important because uh, it's also used for plotting, but uh, it uh, simplifies uh, the plotting of uh, the raster data set uh, in uh, Python. Okay, so uh, you can also use it for visualization, but you need to install it. So first you need to install it, and then you can uh, uh, visualize, for example, the data uh, as uh, a RGB. So for this case, I'm visualizing the same uh, data set that I visualized with Rasterio uh, as RGB. So this is uh, the data set. Okay, so this is quite an important library. Uh, then next we have uh, NumPy. So NumPy is also very important uh, uh, in order to manipulate uh, uh, raster data. So it uh, it offers uh, a very important uh, foundation for numerical operations uh, uh, for the raster data analysis uh, in Python. So, for example, here we can use it uh, uh, to create uh, uh, the or to calculate the normalized difference vegetation index. So, these are just a numerical uh, uh, application that we can use for uh, the NumPy uh, library. Okay, and then uh, we can visualize uh, this uh, uh, NDVI. Okay. Uh, next, uh, we have uh, a very important library. So this uh, uh, geospatial data abstraction library is uh, very important because it's an, a, a backbone for many of uh, these uh, uh, geospatial libraries, uh, including Rasterio. So this is uh, quite useful and it's used in another uh, uh, programming language. So it also supports a, a wide range of uh, raster formats and provides uh, many functionalities for raster data processing. Okay, so this is uh, an example of a code uh, to visualize an uh, uh, image uh, using uh, uh, this uh, library. Okay, so this is just an, a sample. Okay, next uh, we have uh, also a very important library, uh, which is called uh, SciPy. So SciPy also uh, complements uh, NumPy because it provides uh, additional scientific computing tools that we can use uh, for advanced analysis. Okay, for example, uh, in this case, uh, we want to filter the NDVI image that we have created because uh, uh, we can adjust uh, the range of the values so that uh, uh, we can have uh, uh, we can remove uh, errors or anom an anomalies. So in this case, I'm using a, a filter uh, from uh, the SciPy uh, uh, library. Right. So if you you see, you can see this is a uh, a filtered uh, uh, NDVI uh, image uh, that I've used that I've created uh, from uh, using the SciPy image uh, library. Sorry. Uh, next, 
Okay, this is the code. Okay, so next, uh, next we have uh, the scikit image. So scikit scikit uh, images are uh, important for image processing. Uh, it contains uh, additional algorithms uh, th that are useful, for example, for uh, transformations. And uh, this transformation can be used uh, uh, in uh, d detailed data uh, analysis. Uh, for example, here. We can also use uh, filters uh, in order to do uh, to perform age detection. Uh, remember, this is one of the most important uh, tool that we can use for feature engineering. Right, so, if, if you want to perform, uh, say, machine learning, uh, you want to create additional data sets. So, this can be uh, useful. So, for this example, uh, we take in the NDVA image that we've created and then uh, use uh, the edge detection, uh, in this case uh, using the Sobel uh, algorithm uh, to uh, create uh, the edges. Right, then uh, finally uh, we have uh, the scikit-learn. So scikit-learn is very important because it provides uh, uh, important tools for supervised and unsupervised classification of uh, the satellite imagery. Uh, for example, for unsupervised uh, uh, classification, we have methods like uh, k-means, uh, uh, which I uh, illustrate here. And for the supervised uh, classification, uh, we have uh, many machine learning uh, uh, algorithms available. For example, support vector machines, random forest, k-nearest neighbor, and uh, so forth. Right uh, here, I'm just uh, showcasing uh, an example uh, using k-means for unsupervised classification because I don't have any training data. So if you run this code, you are going to get uh, uh, your classified uh, map uh, based on the, the k-means uh, uh, clustering algorithm. Right, so these are the important uh, uh, libraries uh, that will be using uh, as we go on so i think uh, it's quite important that you play around with the code so please um, just uh, start exploring uh, these libraries uh, so that you can uh, enhance your geospatial data analysis skills thank you very much uh, for watching uh, see you in the next one